Friday Night Fever with Mike Ludlow. Good evening, everyone. Yes, we're thumbs up. We're about ready to rock and roll. Hello, Winter Carnival. Michigan Tech has won 43 of the 65 Winter Carnivals, and they would like to keep the McGinnis Trophy in Houghton once again. The Huskies are taking on Bemidji State this weekend. So let's go to the McGinnis Student Ice Arena. Defenseman Riley Sweeney. This doesn't happen every day. The shorty beats Michael Bitzer for his first goal of the season. 1-0 Tech. That calls for the bagpipes. Next 20 minutes, Huskies not doing much. Charlie O'Connor, Corey Ward. Oops, that's the other team scoring. We're tied at 1. Jamie Phillips prepared this time. Stops Philip Marinasio. He had 25 saves on the night. Let's go to the third. We're still tied at 1. Dylan Stamen is going to get the puck. And he risks it home. His seventh of the campaign. The Huskies are up by one. Minute to go in regulation. Tanner Carroll. <laughs> Oops. Puts in the empty netter falling down. Tech with the goals in the third period. Win this one. Three to one. Riley Sweeney talks about his first of the season. Oh, it's, it's no secret uh, that I don't get a lot of goals. So when I do, that's special. That one was for my dad tonight. So it, it meant a lot. It felt good. I saw the puck at the point, and the D-man went to make a play, uh, and I had a little bit of momentum. Dylan made a good job, or made a good play to intercept it, chipped it out of the zone, and I just had a little bit of speed and saw my opportunity and went for it. I mean, the goals are, are tough to come by, and against a team like that who's played exceptionally well, uh, we were fortunate, but we found a way to win, and I'm, I'm proud of my team uh, and the guys in that locker room, the way they hung in there and, and found a way to win a game. It's a very important game, and I thought they did a great job. Both teams are back in action tomorrow afternoon in Houghton at 5.07 p.m. To the scoreboard. I was hoping to have NMU highlights. However, Minnesota Duluth was your winner tonight by the count of 3-1. Maybe we'll get them later in the show. I'm not sure. Bowling Green takes care of Ferris State, so NMU gets a bargain there. Falcons 2-1 over the Bulldogs. Minnesota State down to Alaska Anchorage 5-2. Lake Superior State and Alaska are just underway. And in Minnesota Junior Hockey, it was Ileana defeating the Marquette Royals by the count of 6-2. Let's go to high school hockey. The Houghton Gremlins, an earlier game because of Winter Carnival, taking on the De Pere Voyagers. 14 shots on goal for Gremlins in the first period, and Reed Piedela stopped, but Wyatt Liston is there for the tap in, and it's 1 0 Gremlins. Five minutes later, Kale Markham to Jonathan Bostwick, and that one's going top shelf. A power play goal. Gremlins up by a pair. The Voyagers have something the same. Matt Willems. Gets it out to Wojciech Orada, and he scores on the backhander. And the Piers back in business, only trailing 2-1. to one. However, Houghton goalie Marcus Gloss says, all right, that's enough. You get lucky once, you're not getting lucky again. Takes care of the business the rest of the night. And Houghton goes on to win this one by the count of 6-1. to one. When we come back, plenty of boys basketball, including North Central, the number two team in the Little Five pool. And number one, Iron Mountain. We'll have highlights of both of those games and more next. To high school basketball, and once again, we've said several times this year, Class D boys basketball in the UP appears to be a cut above some of the other classes. And we will try to show you examples of that tonight. We will go to Crystal Paul Falls, where the Forest Park Trojans were taking on the North Central Jets. North Central getting off to a fast start. That's Rob Granquist. He hits the three-pointer, 5-2 Jets. On the inbound, Jason Whitens to Troy Eckberg. Oh, very nicely done. And that is Dawson Bilski getting the layup. Here come the Trojans. Cameron Bajeski whips it around the D and gets the layup. But the Trojans trail 14-4 after one. To the second, Mr. Whitens to Mr. Bilski. And that's a monster three. And the crowd says they like it, they like it. They want some more. Trojans, Daniel Nasserini will go to the basket. He will put it up and in. The Jets, though, keep getting baskets and keep getting the lead. Granquist the spin using the right hand this time to get it to drop off the glass. Trojans close close in the second half, but the Jets hang on to win 46 to 41. Meanwhile, Lakeland and Hubble also in the little five pole, taking on Antonagan and from the outside, that's Brett Poisson. He had a good night with a three, just 30 seconds into the game. 
Taylor Boudry to Mitchell Borseth in the corner, and we're tied at three. Taylor Roos will get the ball for the Lakes next. He's going down the baseline and hits the fadeaway. Lakes ahead by a pair. Gladiators really like the corner. Beaudry, another game tire at eight, just three minutes into the game. Yes, this is an up and down contest. And yes, it's also a smaller court, which of course helps matters when we like it on offense. That's another basket there as the Lakes take a 10-8 lead. Roos there off the capitalization of a turnover. Cootie Canari picks up the ball. He puts that one in. Lake Linden would take over in the second half and pulled away to get the victory in this one by the count of 87 to 60. Meanwhile, let's go to Ishpeming. Mean, Bucky Johnson and the number one Mountaineers of Iron Mountain in the Big Five pole visiting the Hematites. First quarter, Ozzy Corp to Travis Freedy for two blue and white. Luke Coolio with a jumper and Ishpeming would have an 8-2 advantage after eight minutes. To the second stanza, Carson Wonders gets the black and gold going with this drive. 13-7 though, Ishpeming still ahead. Cole Rosado, zing, nice pass to Tanner Hootery, and that made it 16-9. Ishpeming still in command. You can't give Carson Wonders a direct path to the basket because you are going to get burned just about every time and he takes care of business there. Now he's hustling back on defense, but Ishpeming gets the ball up court quickly. Thomas Finnegan, Ozzy Corp. From the outside, yes. And Ishpeming has an 18 to 11 advantage. Now let's reverse the procedure. Corp to Finnegan. Oh, the pretty reverse and the foul. Ishpeming led 27-13 at the half. Iron Mountain had a chance to tie at the buzzer, but it did not work. Hematites hang on 48 to 45. Let's go back to the Copper Country. Lance and Hancock, third quarter, Brett Matson. And he scores over his defender to make it 35-15 Purple Hornets. Jared Perriam hits the mid-range jumper to give the Bulldogs some life. But it's pretty much Lance the rest of the quarter. And Matson scores off the inbound. Joey Magariah will knife his way through the lane and next. And that makes it 39-17 Purple and White. Tyler Funky, an offensive rebound and the bucket and the foul. He would make the free throw 42 to 18. Magariya knocks down the baseline. Jay and Lance is really rolling now. Trevor Uren to Johnny the, the Slorier for the corner three. And the Purple Hornets go on to win this one 61 to 39. Girls basketball. We go to Gladstone. Everybody's dressed in black. And they're fired up, ready to go. The Braves against the Maroons. Alexis St. Cyr for three. And the Braves have an 8-2 lead in quarter number one. Then the touch pass to Ashley Edwardson. That makes it 12-2 Gladstone. We move to the second quarter and the Maroons start going. Tristan Teasling right to the hoop. An 11-0 run. Benomini's now in front, 13-12. Avery Stewart, the layup. We're tied at 15. Fast break, Morgan Roman to Paige Barrett. And that's gonna be good for two more off the glass. St. Cyr hits another three, but it's Menominee your winner tonight, 49 to 40. Maroons take this one. A former Michigan Tech football assistant coach has been hired as an assistant coach by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Butch Berry has been named an assistant offensive line coach with the Bucs. He joins the team from Central Michigan University where he spent five seasons there coaching the offensive line and tight ends. Barry began his coaching career with the Chip Waz as a graduate assistant prior to coaching stops at Southwest Missouri State, Michigan Tech from 2006 through 2008, and North Greenville. Barry was an offensive line coach for the Huskies for one season before becoming offensive coordinator after that. Also in NMU sports, cross country skier Ian Torchia placed 11th in the World Junior Championships today in Kazakhstan. He was 11th in the 10K freestyle race in just under, or just over, I should say, 51 minutes. A couple of notes because I have time tonight. Some notes from high school basketball in the Kearney NATO victory over Mid Peninsula. Manny Duran had 39 points for Kearney NATO, including a school tying nine three pointers in the contest. Jack Herkus of Calumet also had nine three pointers and a total of 31 points in Calumet's overtime victory. Austin Moss had five goals for Menominee Marinette in the victory over Lance, seven to nothing. Don't forget, Winter Carnival Hockey Mid-Peninsula Conference Wrestling tomorrow at Gwynn. 
Have a great weekend.